Today on Hands-On Photography, we're going to talk about family photographs. Yeah, I got some feedback from one of our amazing Hands-On Photography listeners, and uh, we have some questions about a family photo. I'm going to walk you through it, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Y'all stay tuned. This This is Twit. No ads, just the content. That's what you get when you join Club Twit. You even get extras like Twit Plus, our new bonus feed just for members, and exclusive access to the Club Twit Discord community. Join now for just $7 a month and support Twit as we continue to create top-notch podcasts you expect and deserve. We're just getting started, so be one of the first to join as we build Club Twit from the ground up. You could be an early member. Go to twit.tv slash club twit to learn more and sign up now. Thanks. Well, hey, what's going on, everybody? I am Ant Pruitt, and this is Hands on Photography here on Twit TV. Hope y'all are doing well. I'm unbelievable as always. This is a podcast where I like to sit down and share different tips and tricks that are going to help make you a better photographer as well as a better post processor. And today on this show, I want to do a bit of feedback. Um, we'll actually go through some feedback that I've received from you, the Hands on Photography listener. And uh, just sort of walk through the message and walk through the image that was sent to me. It's going to be a lot of fun. But before we get into that, if this is your first time catching the show, let me say welcome to you and thank you for popping in. But do me a favor and go ahead and subscribe on whatever podcast application you're enjoying this on. Uh, We're available on pretty much all of them. Yeah, pretty much all of them. Apple Podcasts, uh, Spotify, Google's service, (laughs) YouTube, what have you, or just go to the website, twit.tv slash hop, that's twit.tv slash H-O-P for hands-on photography, and you'll see all of our episodes there, all of our show notes there, and all of our subscription options there as well. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with this week's episode. Okay, so I got an email uh, from Mr. Nathan Merrill, and, you know, it, it was I, I've, I'll go ahead and say I've truncated this email because it was a little bit long, um, included some personal stuff in there that I, I just want to give a nod, say thank you for that. But I don't want to I won't necessarily share that on air. But thank you, Mr. Merrill. Uh, but, yeah, let's just go ahead and dive right into it. So let me switch my screen over and show you the email. OK, email says, first off. And thank you so much for giving us your expertise uh, on hop. I'm learning a lot and just wish I had more time to work on my amateur photography. Was wondering if you had interest in using our family photo as an example of editing an outside group shot. I tried to get a decent, try to get decent focus with my Olympus OM DE M10 Mark II and a 25 millimeter prime on a tripod, but I'm sure my technique could have been better. Tried using an LED panel on the top to fill shadows on the face, but it was a bit glitchy and kept shutting off, even with the fresh batteries. Oh, that's too bad. The message continues. I didn't have a reflector, but maybe I should. I would always like to capture our family with a good memory in each stage of life. That's that's an awesome message. Also, we enjoy our Colorado mountains around here, so they should look good, but I suppose not to steal the attention. Yeah, I get that too. My editing skills are better than the average iPhone or Apple Photos app user, but I don't have time to immerse myself in learning Lightroom or Photoshop. But there's still a lot of power and adjustment functionality of Apple Photos, Luminar, Pixelmator Photos, and etc. So here's the raw file, and you have my permission to use this on the show if you see fit. I appreciate it. And that comes from Mr. Nathan Merrill. All right. So what we have here um, is this beautiful family portrait. There we go. It's a beautiful family portrait uh, out there in the Colorado mountains. Absolutely beautiful. And he mentioned that he shot this with the 25 millimeter lens prime and um, used a tripod. So he's going to get a steady shot, which is good. Uh, And he's got it at 25 mil. And I believe I can't remember if that's a crop sensor um, crop sensor camera or not, but 25 mil is still fairly wide. And I think this is a pretty nice focal length for this type of photograph. So we're going to dive into some of the ins and outs of this image. So let me see here. Let's go to, let's start with just the, the, the overall framing of it. So if I hit my crop 
menu here inside of Lightroom, you'll see that I am looking at the full image here. Um, the only problem and concern that I have with this, Mr. Merrill, is you framed it and you cut their feet off down here at the bottom. If I'm looking down here at the bottom of the frame, everybody's feet have been, been cut off. You, you amputated them. I don't think that works very well, so that's something to consider in the future. Uh, you had that tripod, just move it back another step and a half or so to be able to get everybody in frame. Or if you really want to crop it down, still be able to get the mountains as best you can, but try to crop it down at roughly waist high for everybody or mid thigh or something like that. That way you still get the mountains in the sky in the background. Um, you don't necessarily have to constrain the crop like I did. So if you want to go wide, you can. Uh, but that was the first step that, that popped out into my head on this. But I'm just going to reset this for now and close it. And this is something that can be done in any photo editor that's out there. I'm using Lightroom, but as you mentioned, there's other things out there such as Luminar and Pixelmator, and they have all of these tools that I'm going to discuss today. Okay, but let me let me hop back to my camera real quick here. So if we take a look at this image here and, and just think about the idea of shooting a group portrait or family portrait like this here, you have to consider the environment, which he did. He, he's, he's thinking, I got these beautiful mountains in the background. I, I want them to be visible, but not necessarily steal all the attention. So that's great. That's pretty much thinking of this the way you would look at a landscape shot. You're going to have something in the foreground, something midway through and something in the background. It just piques the interest of the viewer. Great job on that. Uh, but then you want to have something that's going to be wide enough on the focal end to be able to get everybody in there. 24 millimeters and down to maybe 16 millimeters is pretty good to go on a full frame sensor. It's going to be plenty, plenty wide enough. You nailed that tripod another good idea if you're going to use a self timer because you want to jump into the image that's the best way to go just make sure you mark your spot uh, where you're going to stand try to mark it easily whether it's with a little pebble or a stone or a piece of gaffer tape or what have you whatever you can just to give you a consistent spot to stand in uh, and not really screw up the framing of your photograph so all of that's really good stuff here the problem that I have that I think would have helped you out on it is the image is a little bit soft. You mentioned the focus on it. And when it comes to focusing with pretty much any camera and any lens, it's going to you're going to find a, uh, that your lens is going to have an optimal uh, aperture setting to give you the best sharpness. With the camera that I'm looking at right now, the lens is a 24 to 105, um, 105 millimeter focal length. But the aperture on it, if I set it to roughly F8, that's pretty much the, the sharpest image I'm going to get out of this. If I go any higher, say F, you know, F22 or F12 or whatever, in theory, I am going to get more of the frame in focus uh, because it's, it's not um, giving us a shallow depth of field. But when I start to zoom in and pixel peep on things, I will notice that stuff starts to get a little bit fuzzy here and there, particularly around the edges. But I have found that if I use F8, yeah, I'm gonna get a little bit of depth of field, but ideally pretty much everything that I focus on is gonna be really, really sharp. And so let's go back to your image here. Okay, so when I look at the metadata inf information here, over here in the upper right corner, it says you shot this at 1 80th of a second, 25 millimeters, ISO 200, F14. Now, F14, that's a pretty closed down aperture, so you're not going to get a lot of light coming in um, on this shot. So that's why you, you have a somewhat slower shutter speed at, you know, 1 80th of a second. The F14 makes sense to a certain extent because you are shooting outside. I get this. You're outside in broad daylight. And it's pretty, pretty harsh sun. So you don't want too much light. But I would recommend taking a look back at episode two, where we talked about the exposure triangle. I would take the aperture down to something maybe like F, F8, F10. It depends on the, the lens that you're um, that you're working with. 
And because you're putting so much more light coming through that aperture, you need to speed up your shutter. Crank that shutter speed up to maybe one two hundredth of a second. That way you're not going to get so much light coming through and have to deal with clipping of your uh, highlights. And if you look at the histogram over here in the upper right, even with you setting it at such a small aperture, you still have some clipping in your highlights over here. Notice the histogram has that, that spike popping up for you over here on the right hand side. Fortunately, you shot this in raw and it's pretty easy to fix this. So my tips on that are basically start with it in camera first and get the best that you can out of it. And you did. But now let's take a look at it from a post processing standpoint. So you can do a lot of automatic adjust adjustments in here, which is what I've done already. So let me hit reset here. This is what it would have looked like. You know, the highlights are still pretty spiked. Uh, the shadows are just a little bit dark here in the middle of the frame. And if I just hit auto inside of Lightroom, it does a pretty good job with this AI of fixing some things up from a tonal and uh, exposure standpoint. Looks pretty good. But I think we could still do a little bit more, but I want to focus primarily on the family. They're the focal point of this photograph. So let's let's make sure they're standing out. And the best and easiest way to do this is to use whatever selective adjustment options you have in your photo editor. For me, there's an adjustment brush, uh, there's a radio filter, and there's a great gradient gradient filter if I want to use that. I'm gonna use the radio filter here in the upper right. Just click on that or just click uh, M on my keyboard. And then I'm going to set this uh, effect to, we'll just say exposure for now. And then I'm just gonna pretty much just draw a circle like this and place it around the subject here. Okay, we'll do that and just make it, you know, a little bit bigger, but not terribly much bigger, but just big enough to make sure they are the focal point. And if you look over here on the right hand side, you can make adjustments to to show that well, I want to make the mask adjustments inside of this filter on the outside. So if I click on invert like that, and I turn this exposure all the way down, you see what it does. And if I turn the exposure, uh, if I tell it to invert that, it's only affecting the inside. So I'm gonna just use this to work with our um, subjects here. So I'm gonna push this exposure up just a little bit like so. I'm gonna pull the shadows up just a little bit more. Take the highlights down. Okay, so we got the highlights coming down, looking good. Maybe take the white down just a little touch too, but not too much. And the black levels, that's that's gonna be tricky because we want to have some sort of contrast there. So I'm gonna pull the black levels down to maybe negative 10 or so, and then give it some contrast like that. But then let's go ahead and push this up some more. Okay, so now we're getting a little bit more focus, uh, if you will, on our subjects here. And also with that said, because I'm in a radio filter that has a gazillion different options, I can adjust the sharpness inside of this filter. So I can push this up to sharpen it up just a touch, like so. Okay, so now let me get out of that filter and let's just zoom in, you know. Again, like I said, it, it's not terribly sharp uh, when you zoom in at 200% like this, but it does look a lot better by giving more focus to the family here. And I could st probably just dial back the highlights just a touch more. So let's see here, let me go back to that filter, pull the highlights back on it, just a touch more. Okay, so that's done. So now let's take a look at the background. Look at the sky. Look at the, the mountains that are showing up there. The sky is still a bit blown out again because look at this histogram. Everything is exposing to the right of the histogram. That's letting me know that, yeah, this thing is pretty spiked on the highlights. Once again, do some selective adjustments. We can use some sort of adjustment brush or you can just use an overlay filter similar 
to the uh, radio filter. But instead, I'm going to use this graduated filter. And I'll just drag down like so. Okay. And I'm going to tell this to be, we'll say the highlight settings for now. And we're just going to make sure the highlights are pulled back. If I crank them up, you'll see it just really blows out the sky and you don't get any detail in the sky. All of the clouds are gone. So let's pull those highlights back. We can even pull the exposure back just a little like so. And maybe even do a bit of dehaze. But when I do dehaze, it's going to make things a little bit darker. So we're probably going to have to pull some things up. So let's dehaze it because it's a bit hazy back there because that's what happens with with mountains <laughs> back way back there in the background in the middle of the clouds. So I'm dehazing it and you, are, you can already see a difference in the sky. We can see the details of the sky. Now, granted, there's a little bit of banding happening right here in the upper portion of it. If you look a little closer, it looks like little strips uh, popping through the clouds there. So we don't want to push it too far because that, that's just showing where the image is breaking down, unfortunately. So don't push it too far. All right, so now we're getting there. And I'm going to put some of that exposure back just a little bit. Okay. And the beauty of this, this graduated filter is I only, I'm only affecting the upper piece of the frame here. Because if I expand it down even more, it's going to touch everything that is above this, this line here. It's not affecting anything um, below it. So if I only did it this far, like so, and just play around with the slider, you'll see that it's only affecting that upper piece. Okay. So just adjust this filter to work for your frame. So we'll pull it down right about here. And of course, I went overboard with the exposure. So let's push it back just a touch. And look at our histogram. Histogram looks totally different now. All right. Maybe if I give it a little saturation too. There we go. I think this is looking much better that way. All right. Now, so that's that's two different adjustments that we've done. Uh, one with the radio filter, one with a graduated filter. But now we can really just fine tune some more selective adjustments by using an adjustment brush. And again, check your mobile editor or your photo editor of choice. I'm pretty sure there's some sort of selective adjustments in there. And for me, I'm going to hit K on the keyboard and do this little adjustment brush to where I can drop a pin right here and select uh, exposure or what have you, just like we did before. But instead of it being an actual object on the screen, I'm using my mouse as a paintbrush. And so let's say exposure and we're going to pull exposure back. And I'm just going to use my mouse cursor as a paintbrush and just brush onto the mountains here. Okay. And if I want to see where I'm brushing, I just hit O on the keyboard and it lets me see where I'm brushing like that. Cause it's still a little bit hazy back there on the mountains. I really want some of that detail to come back. So we're going to do D haze and the D haze does help break up a lot of that in the background. And you just, brush around like so. And if you need to make the brush smaller, you can. Just brush in the background right here in the middle. Same around the head there. Looking good. I don't want it to be that blue. So I'm going to push the color temperature up just a little bit to warm it up some. Okay. There we go. And then I'm going to take the whites and just pull it back a touch because the white is a little bit hot right behind her head here in the center of the frame. So I'm going to take the whites, pull it back and pull those highlights back just a little more. There we go. And add some contrast. This contrast is a good thing. In small Porsches, of course. 
a little texture and clarity for detail. We're good to go. All right, and I'm gonna do one more brush on it just to get right here next to her, her face and head. So let's brush that. Bring this exposure down. Right there. See, I overdid it right here, but that's okay. Because it's just a selective adjustment. So I could just take this exposure slider and push it to where it fits in a little bit more. There we go. Much better. Good, good, good. Okay. So now I think we are good to go. I think this is an optimal way of making adjustments for this family portrait. Um, you mentioned having some sort of reflector uh, for a shot like this. And yes, you are right. A reflector is a great idea for uh, portraits outside because it's going to allow you to bounce some of the sunlight off of the reflector back into your subject. Problem is, it's going to take some extra hands to hold that can't hold that reflector for you. So you may need a photo phot photography assistant at the time, and that's not always the case as an amateur. So it's going to be a little bit difficult. Uh, every now and then, you can use objects that are around you to act as an as a reflector. But in this situation, you really didn't have much of a choice. Uh, you you were just going to have to fight the elements, and the best way to do that is to check your camera settings and go with it that way. And again, this is just a quick and dirty um, touch up on this. I could still fine tune this even more. Uh, let's see, I'll do another adjustment brush and, you know, and I can, if I want to just work on the faces, I can do that. So I can just click here and let's just work on this face a little bit. Just bring it out just a little bit more. Pretty easy, straightforward. Just a lot of selective adjustments. And for the little missus down here, she's a little overexposed. So let's bring her exposure down just a little bit. Like so. See, this is going too far. We don't want that. And this is overexposed. We don't want that. So let's find the happy median for her exposure which is right about there. Cool. I think this looks all right. What do you think? So let's do a little bit of a before and after. So let's see, this is before. And then this is after. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's much improved. All right, cool. Okay, folks, that is going to do it for this week's episode. Thank you all so much for your continued support. And Mr. Merrill, thank you for sending this image over to me to play with and share with our hands-on photography community. I love doing this stuff and I love sharing these tips and tricks. I hope you find this helpful and hopefully you can apply it to uh, some of the, the images that you have on your hard drive right now. And again, I know I'm using Lightroom. I know everybody doesn't have Lightroom, but a lot of people do, believe it or not. <laughs> uh, but what I did are, are what I did are, was use some tools that are available in pretty much every photo editor out there these days. Um, even as, even things like Snapseed on the mobile device has adjustment brushes and adjustment filters and things like that. So, yeah, take advantage of those selective adjustments to really, you know, bring out the fine details of the shot. But first, do your best to try to get it right in camera. That's going to come with time. You're going to be able to stand at a situation like this and notice the sunlight and notice your environment and say, whoo, it's really bright out here. I should probably shoot at roughly, I don't know, one two fiftieth of a second because I'm going to get a whole lot of light if I don't. And I probably want to Take, take a look at my aperture because I'm shooting a group. And if I'm just shooting one person, I could probably tighten it. You know, all of this stuff will start to come pretty much second nature. The more you practice and the more you experiment, the more you get out there and shoot. All right. OK, folks, again, thank you for the support. If you have any questions, feedback, comments, feel free to shoot me an email just like Mr. Merrill did at hop at twit.tv or feel free to tag me over on the social medias. 
on Instagram, I am int underscore Pruitt. And on Twitter, I am int underscore Pruitt. And uh, yeah, just tag me there. Send me anything that you'd like for me to comment on or, or feedback or critiques, things of that nature. I'm more than happy to uh, get back to you. Might take me a little while, but I promise to get back to you. Thank you all again for the support. Now, safely create and dominate. And we'll catch you next time. Y'all take care. Hey, I hope you enjoyed that episode. If you are interested in checking out all things smart home and Internet of Things, then you should check out Smart Tech Today, the podcast I, Micah Sargent, do with my co-host Matthew Casanelli. It's all about the smart home and improving your automations. 